Hello everybody and welcome to this playthrough for Rookie Division with various wins. Before we have a closer look at all the content, make sure that you do hit the thumbs up button. Also subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications. For those of you that do want to take the next step in your game and improve it even more, scan the QR code that is here on the screen or use the link patreon.com slash gold clash tommy you can find in the description down below that will take you to our platform where you can find all our premium guide checkpoint challenge tour play and tournament play but last but not least the info box on the right hand side gives you the club distance adjustment elevation adjustment also a ball and club type i suggest you to play with have in mind that those are all suggestions and you don't have to follow it if you don't want to but there is always a plan behind it so let's go to hole number one For hole number one of the Yongsan Gardens, we're gonna play with our Sniper. I'm playing this with, with a Quasar Ball, as I do want to have a little bit of side spin. So you can see here now that I'm using the two right spin, I'm also using 1.8 top spin, leaving the ball guideline slightly short of pin. Sure, as you can see, there are many opportunities or let's say possibilities when it comes to this part three as you can bounce before the water like i'm doing you can also bounce with your first bounce after the water if you in any way are uh, concerned about that water but as there are so much room to bounce on uh, the fireway before and after i do believe that this is going to be the more consistent and better way to attack the pin for an hole in one i play in the video max plus 20 whereof i should be playing at max plus 25 but that's because obviously we're counteracting the wind i would say that the true elevation here is going to be 15 percent from front t on hole and number two it seems obviously very open on the left hand side but i value the right hand side and i think this is the way to go regardless what wind direction you do have of t and i will explain we're gonna use four and a half top spin two left spin aim center down the fairway and adjustment is max no elevation as this one is more or less entirely flat when it comes to looking at where our t box is combined with compared to where the first bounce is gonna be center the ball hit perfect i'm using a kingmaker here not that it's uh, a must you can use a titan as well i do however want to play with a p3 ball as i do have sniper seven if i would be having sniper nine or ten i would be having then more power which would allow me to play with a ball that do a power two or maybe even power one so the second shot here now is very interesting we're gonna play a rough bump from distance you know me i love rough bumps and this rough bump especially because you know you have so much rough that it's more or less impossible to miss it but i'm gonna try to catch this little sticky spot or funnel as we call it uh, by uh, using some left spin trying to get into this spot here uh, you can see the more right i move the more sticky uh, it becomes so i'm using a little bit more left spin to move myself a little bit more right with my target uh, aiming with the ball guideline into the hole and not entirely into that sticky spot but it will have to do for this time 10 percent elevation true club distance here and i am a little bit under adjusted um but once then um once if we would be having a better adjustment this would have been in for an albatross and we go back to that i value the right hand side over the left it's because it's just a simple and consistent way we can play a drive without any overpower needed uh, and we can get ourselves into a spot where we always have a sniper to pin which is an accurate a very accurate club which will help us to attack this pin for an albatross for in a consistent basis On the drive here on hole number three we can either play left or we can play right the important part with both of the sides is that you need to get the ball past the trees so you do have an open view towards the pin in this instance with the wind coming left to right i value to play on the left hand side this as it will give me more or less a straight tailwind on the second shot and i believe that's easier to play 
in instead of going on the right hand side which would give me a more or less a straight crosswind so that's kind of how i'm trying to think here but obviously it's all about what you feel comfortable with the left side fairway is a bit more narrow compared to the right side fairway and also the left hand fairway take you slightly closer to pin on the second for your second shot where off on the right hand side it takes you a little bit further away so there is good there is bad things uh, or pros and cons with both of the sides simple drive max plus 10 a little bit of backspin a little bit of side spin and we are at 312. now second shot we're going to play with our wedge and here i say once again play with a wedge that gives you a good ball guideline obviously a good accuracy is very helpful so for those having the possibility to play with the end bringer is uh, it's definitely in a big advantage over others because you can see me here now I do aim accurately I do adjust accurately but I do hit great and with such a low accuracy uh, not low but uh, semi low accuracy on the firefly it will end up missing where a great ball should be missing and uh, that is obviously something we can't really say much about that's just how it is if we can't hit Perfect, but hole number three offers a good chance for an eagle. For <coughs> hole number four, we are going to play a rough bump. And here from front tee, we are using our long iron. Here it is important to play with the Goliath or with a low level B52. Why? It's because we do need the power on our club. Leaving the ball guideline approximately two green squares short of pin using one and a half bar top spin, three left spin. The reason I'm le leaving it short of pin is because uh, Goliath do, do not have a good ball guideline and to not come in too hot, I need to leave the ball guideline short. Medium distance with a 20% over adjustment is what I'm using here in this video. And a perfect ball here will nicely hit the rough and roll up towards the pin sure you can bounce on the fairway before the bunker or even after the bunker if you would like but if you want to have the best chance for a hole in one then this is the way to play on hole number four of the young sun gardens take your game to the next level with our ultimate tournament text guides for the world champions tournament here in gold clash the game catering to expert and master division play with free to play balls or paid balls and get yourself easily to the weekend round and fight for the prize chests now with the most recent tour rotation as well we do have the exclusive tour shootout guides that are done and dusted they are uploaded on our website for download so make sure to sign up for that as well or just bundle that together with tournament guides or checkpoint challenge or yeah whatever you like and get access to the best shootout guides on the market. Everything can be found on our website, patreon.com slash gold clash. Tommy, you can find in the description down below. You can also scan the QR code here on the screen, and that will take you directly to our platform where you can see all the packages. If any questions before you sign up, you can email support at goldclashtommy.com. On hole number five we do have a short par four to play if we do have a crosswind or a tailwind we shall be pushing to try to get the ball over to the final fairway like that and then we can definitely go for the hole in a very yeah we can definitely go for the pin but now we're going to have to settle and play for the final fairway island and bounce ourselves uh, up towards the green for a simple wedge Obviously, having more topspin, apply a little bit more topspin as 4.5 is a little bit on the low side when it comes to um, when it comes to the, the extra mile. But this is the best driver I do have on this account. Maximum distance plus 10 is what I'm using here from front T. And I would say playing this type of play, a power firewall may not be required. But in general, I would say a power fireball will be very helpful to always have the distance to reach. Now we're over to the final fairway and we will take ourselves a short and sweet eagle wedge which we're gonna take a look at here in the end so here i would say we, when it comes to the wedges and i say this every time i do make a playthrough for those of you that are play, that are playing in rookie divisions choose a wedge that do have a good ball guideline because it will help you a lot 
in doing shots like this where we can do with the firefly with all the top spin but most especially helps you with knowing if you're aiming correct or not because having a uh, very poor ball guidelines very easy to aim sh too short or too long and that will uh, make it come in uh, short in line or maybe hot and hit the pin and bounce out now we have a good ball guideline then the eagle becomes very easy on the drive here you will notice me looking around a little bit to see what would be the best option here and sure we have a very open fireway on the left we have an open fireway on the right but we need to be a little bit smarter than that because obviously we need to be realistic and think here now okay if i'm gonna push the ball yeah far down the fairway either left or right side we need to find ourselves a way to either play through the trees or above the trees and the closer we have the ball the closer we are to the trees the harder it will be to play over and through so what i'm doing here is that i'm playing max plus 20 and i'm using four and a half top spin and the two right spin using some overpower to compensate uh, because i do not want to adjust down the water and now we are centered down the fairway and we're actually going to use the fairway path that uh, goes to the pin it may look like something that is just like a way to get to green and just take the eagle and move on but I chose this video instead of choosing another one with a drop, but I chose this video to demonstrate how big this sticky spot is that we're going to play into. Now, obviously, having a headwind, uh, we are going to ensure that we are going to see our target all the way. We do want to obviously have a clear ball guideline. So you can see here now me moving there. Look at that sticky spot. Look how big that is. And it's not just to have a sticky spot and it's automatically going to go into the hole. Now when having headwind, what's going to happen is that the ball guideline will be compressed and it should miss left, which is also what it does here in this video, which is something um, I mistakenly um, didn't correct for. So here we would be better off aiming on the right side to compensate for that. 10% elevation through club distance going to be somewhere between medium and maximum distance. Uh, and again to just have that said as well we don't need to play with a kingmaker here um but obviously the side spin is very helpful comes in too hot and left but you saw the sticky spot there that's what we're looking for before and that will be very helpful as getting this albatross on a general basis on the hole number seven we are going for pin especially from the front tee here we're using a power five ball and we're using two left spin and we're using two back spin uh, aiming to where i do believe we are aiming for the pin it's obviously difficult when we do not have a good accurate sorry good ball guideline on our extra mile look at that view by the way it's um i, I must say this is probably the most insane course i've ever uh, insane hole i've ever played in golf clash uh, based off the design maximum distance with a 30 percent elevation we're playing massively downhill which is the only tricky part when it comes to this hole and now we're basically playing this part four as a part three where there will be people making and holding one so nice simple eagle on hole seven So on hole number nine here, this is a very interesting part five where with a good tailwind, we are most definitely able to send this ball to green uh, or to be close to green, either using the right hand fairway on the top right or the center using those fairway islands to use a top spin boost ball and bounce it down there, depending on once again, what tee box you're playing, also what type of ball and clubs you're having. However, we are kind of stuck here now with our extra mile. So I'm going to try to find a way of laying up, which would in the end become uh, a way of playing if we do not have a tailwind of T. So I'm going to lay up on the very far left as I'm um, restricted to 4.5 topspin, can't use more than that. Uh, adjustment is going to be max plus 20 from here. And I'm using a power five ball mainly for the second shot, not so much for the drive. Perfect ball it is, 
and we are looking to get as far down the fairway possible obviously without risking too much because it is easy with uh pushing too hard and then might just be poor execution and we roll into the rough now second shot from here is not the best i've done in my life but at least it displays uh, the id with this type of play which is number one you can go for a rough bump i believe that the rough bump is the best way to play this shot however you will have to have a sniper eight or you have to have a big dog or cataclysm to allow yourself to have more topspin if playing this one in slight headwind because if uh, playing this one even if aiming uh, aiming through the hole we will not have speed enough to get to the hole and it will then curve off to the right uh, once it loses speed you can obviously bounce on the fairway as well as the second alternative here that would be i would say a tougher one to drop consistently but it will obviously remove any sort of risk that you may feel with this type of rough bump i personally don't feel any risk with this rough bump but i know there are people watching here that do feel that rough bump takes an unnecessary risk and might just be uh, interested in locking in the eagle and move on and that's totally fine you can see here now that we're not having speed enough it curves off to the right but the line was good and we just need more top spin so hold number nine many different ways i believe we can play this hole on and it's going to be very interesting to see this uh, in the tournament but also if this course happened to be in tour play in the future as well uh, in to then see what way we can play this hole For hole and number nine we're gonna play another rough bump and here obviously you can see uh, now we're playing from front tee obviously but playing from different tee boxes will uh, be making it uh, pretty difficult from second and third tee whereof the second uh, the front tee here is actually fairly simple i'm using six top spin one right spin ball guideline to be once again short of pin as i'm not having a fully developed ball guideline approximately one green square short of pin is where i ending up to do uh, in the end so i'm playing medium distance with a five percent elevation and um, playing with a navigator here just to reduce the wind as much as i can but still uh, keep obviously it completely free to play perfect ball it is and you can see here that we do have a lot of room on this rough to bounce and it rolls up the green and uh, getting in the hole for a lovely hole in one here on hole number nine thank you so much everybody for watching this playthrough for rookie division with various wins if you do want to improve your game even more scan the qr code here on the screen or go directly to patreon.com slash gold clash tommy via the link in the description down below last but not least Hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notifications. Those three things will help the channel immensely. Thank you once again for watching. I wish you the best of luck in the Gold Clash game.